Hey, are you annoyed by acne? Have you heard that to stop pimples, you should change your diet by not eating things like chocolate? Well, here's a fun fact. Did you know that that is a myth? And in fact, it was actually debunked all the way back in 1965 when three researchers fed 65 acne-plagued teenagers candy bars and then counted how many pimples they ended up with, finding that chocolate and fat had no impact on the progression of their acne. Two of those researchers went on to invent Retin-A, the medication for treating acne as well as potentially smoothing out wrinkles. Isn't that interesting? Okay, now for a slightly less fun fact, one of those researchers was an actual monster. Today, I want to tell you about Albert Kligman, a dermatologist who attended and then worked at University of Pennsylvania starting back in the 1940s. He was a very smart and capable researcher who was focused on changing dermatology from a field where you just kind of describe what you're looking at and then take a guess on how to treat it to a science-based field where hard research can inform better therapies. One of his earliest victories came in the form of treating ringworm, which despite the name is actually a fungus. So far, so good, right? What a hero. Well, because of his success treating ringworm, the authorities at the nearby Holmesburg prison reached out to him for help stopping a similar epidemic of athlete's foot also a fungal disease, amongst their prisoners. So Kligman went to the prison to get a tour, see what the issue was, and he was, he just had this sudden realization. This was not a prison. This was an enormous laboratory. Those weren't prisoners. Those were lab rats. He later told a newspaper that all I saw before me was acres of skin. It was like a farmer seeing a fertile field for the first time. It's worth noting that he started experimenting on prisoners at Holmesburg in 1951, four full years after the Nuremberg Code was created to establish ethical standards around human experimentation that should have prevented him from doing this, because this was very similar to what the Nazis did to their prisoners in concentration camps. Kligman, the son of Jewish immigrants, didn't seem to take notice of this. So he didn't simply just treat the prisoners for their athlete's foot. Instead, he got his own cell block, H block, where prisoners could volunteer to be lab rats for the kingly sum of one to two dollars a day compared to other jobs prisoners could do where they only earned about 15 cents a day. The prisoners were mostly poor, mostly black, mostly uneducated, and they had no idea what they were signing up for to be tested. Even years after the fact, men recalled only a vague understanding of what they were doing, like wearing a latex glove filled with dish detergent for 24 hours. You may think, well, you know, what's the worst that can happen testing dermatological stuff? And let me tell you, a lot. Take Kligman's most famous invention, Retin-A. It was already considered a potential medication for acne by European scientists, but it's extremely irritating to the skin, so they didn't think it was worth pursuing. So Kligman started smearing it on inmates, leading to lots of skin peeling, open wounds, and sores, according to Lawrence O. Gostin, a law professor who was sad that Kligman ended up being so evil that he ruined experimenting on prisoners for everyone. So yeah, topical treatments can cause horrific side effects, but Kligman didn't just stick to lotions and detergents. He accepted money from pharmaceutical companies, chemical manufacturers, and government agencies to expose inmates to radioactive, hallucinogenic, and toxic materials, as the New York Times wrote in his obituary. In some experiments, prisoners were deliberately exposed to pathogens responsible for skin infections, including the herpes virus, staphylococcus bacteria, and the athlete's foot fungus, according to Acres of Skin, a book by Alan M. Hornblum about the Holmesburg prison research. Hornblum was an adult literacy instructor at the prison who was so horrified at the things he saw prisoners go through that he wrote this entire book about it and named it after the horrific quote Kligman said that aptly illustrated Kligman's dehumanization of the inmates. They weren't people, they were just acres of skin to be used in experiments for things like dioxin, a key poison in Agent Orange that Dow Chemical paid him to paint on prisoners' backs in 1966. Holmberg Prison closed in 1996, but Alan Hornblum says what happened during the 50s 50s, 60s, and 70s will live on forever. The researcher showed us photos inside his book, Acres of Skin. Well, what you see in this bottom picture is the prototypic 
experiment that took place at Holmesburg. In some cases, it could just be very plain soap. In other cases, it could be a carcinogenic chemical. The inmates were never told. Almost a half century later, a survey shows 53% of blacks view medical scientists positively compared to whites and Hispanics. Kligman claimed that as far as he knew, none of the experiments affected the prisoners in the long term, but the prisoners say otherwise. Leotis Jones was in the prison awaiting trial for receiving stolen goods when he signed up for H-block trials in order to make bail and hire a lawyer. It's really worth highlighting here. He was trying to make bail. He had not been convicted of anything, but he had to sign up for medical experimentation that he didn't understand to make bail and hire a lawyer. He and his family say that he left that prison with a scarred body and these random angry outbursts that made family life hell for his then five-year-old daughter, who ended up growing up with her own troubled life. Because those experiments didn't just affect those prisoners, they actually caused generational trauma that is still happening. Years later, both of those people became activists for reform, and in 1986, Jones successfully sued the state of Pennsylvania for $40,000 for his suffering. He, he was withdrawn. Uh, he was very defensive, you know, towards my mother and other family members. It was always an argument. It was always an argument or, or a debate or, and at times it became violent. Um, I, I witnessed and probably was in the middle of many fights. I'm talking about physical fights where it was blood drawn and clothes thrown off and it, it ran me crazy. I mean, between the sores and I, I, I was just determined as a kid that he just turned into something and I stayed away from him for a while. There were not just skin patch tests with different concoctions and elixirs and wart virus and herpes simplex and all of these put on somebody's body. There was also a period of years, close to 10 years from the mid 60s to about 72, 73, when the US Army Chemical Corps came into Holmesburg, brought in three trailers that were between two cell blocks and they started doing chemical warfare studies for the Army uh, that were initially done at the Edgewood Arsenal Army Base in Maryland. But the concoctions, specifically LSD, were knocking out the soldiers who were the test subjects then for an extended period of time. And the Army needed more information and another site to do these experiments and everybody in the field of clinical trials at that time in America knew about Albert Kligman, University of Pennsylvania, and Holmesburg. And so like the others, like R.J. Reynolds and like Dow Chemical Company, you had the U.S. Army coming to Kligman stating that we would like you to do a series of protocols for us and we will give you this much money and so forth and so on. And the point I'm trying to get to in a roundabout way is that a lot of these chemical concoctions did significant damage at the time and for a long running period to the psyches of these men. In fact, it was so bad that many of the men who were used to test subjects were given a little, uh, a little card that would be placed on their prison jumpsuit stating, please disregard my behavior. I am a participant in the University of Pennsylvania U.S. Army studies. And if I am looking uh, a bit haphazard to you, please take me back to their cell block. The point being that some of these men were so mentally uh, deranged at the time that they could not remember their names, where they were at, why they were in prison, where they lived, who their loved ones were. And some of the ramifications of these lasted a long time. Another nearly 300 former inmates tried to sue Kligman, UPenn, and Johnson & Johnson, who sells Retin-A, in 2000, but the case was dismissed for being past the statute of limitations. According to a Philadelphia Inquirer article, the survivors of Kligman are still seeking justice today, the 50th anniversary of the ending of the H-block experiments. Kligman died in 2010 at the age of 93 after 50 years on the faculty of UPenn, 
still insisting that he did nothing wrong. But don't worry, he did face some consequences. In 1966, the FDA barred his research for data discrepancies that he blamed on prisoners, and so the ban was soon lifted. It's always worth remembering that the scientific method is good and leads to the betterment of humanity, like acne creams and poison ivy remedies and athlete's foot treatments. But science is a job that is done by humans, and we need to make sure that they aren't doing evil shit to reach their goals. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you loved the video, please subscribe. And if you think the world could use more videos like this and you happen to have a few bucks laying around, head to patreon.com slash Rebecca and join an awesome community of nerds like the people whose names you see on the screen right now. Thanks.